Hi, welcome back. So in this lesson, we'll learn about scheduling and monitoring framework. So we are talking about the first chapter of our advanced test manager certification course. And in that, we are in the first topic that is test pl planning, monitoring and control. So in the previous lesson, we generally talked about test monitoring and in that we talked about establishing early in the life cycle a scheduling and monitoring framework by the test manager. So in this lesson, let's learn about it. So what does it mean to create a scheduling and monitoring framework? There are actually five primary dimensions testing progress of a testing project can be monitored and they are around product or quality risks, defects, tests, coverage and confidence. So if you look at all these five, they can be categorized into two broad categories. The first four of them, the product quality, risks, defects, tests, coverage, these are all called objective measures, means they can be measured, they are numerical in nature. So product defects, product risks, tests and coverage, they can and often are measured and reported using metrics, numbers. And the fifth one, that is the confidence, is we call it as a subjective measure. Typically, subjective measures are not associated with any metrics or any numbers. They are more based on confidence and that is actually measurable in some ways, not directly, but using surveys or some uh, feedback that is gained from the testers and the end users. So confidence, though measurable through surveys, is usually reported subjectively. So these are the five metrics that need to be monitored, four of them objective measures and one subjective measure around confidence have to be measured and around that we will create what we call our monitoring framework. So the framework, why it is important? The framework will enable tracking of test work products and resources against the plan. Planned versus actual measures can be established and compared. Accuracy of information is very important to avoid risk of incorrect management decisions. So the accuracy is of utmost importance. That's why a lot of discussions with stakeholders are needed and establish it in the early in the life cycle based on the overall business objectives of a project must be used. So let's look at how we can relate testing progress to test basis as an example. Let's say our test strategy is focused on risk based testing. So how do we kind of compare test progress or link the test progress uh, and link it to the test basis. Let's say we are using risk based test strategy and in our project we have identified three important risks. Risk 1, risk 2 and risk 3. So what we have to do is that we have to establish a traceability with next testing documentation. That is actually we may create a set of test conditions. So to deal with these three risks in our software we have created six test conditions. And based on these six test conditions, we have devised some four test cases. And let's say as a test manager, now you are reviewing at the end of uh, execution cycle and you want to trace back your test case execution progress to test conditions and from there to risks. So you have stopped the testing after executing a cycle and you have some information about your tests. Some tests are not run, some tests are run but failed, some tests are passed. So let's say look at the diagram there. So test case 1, what happened? Test case 1 is passed. And if you link the past first test case, it is linked to the test condition, the second test condition and the first test condition. And these two test conditions are traced back to the risk 1 that we have already established. So if you look at that from that point of view because test case 
one has been run and passed so a test condition linked to that risk one has already been mitigated but if you look at the test condition two is again linked to test case two and that also has been passed and so given this diagram as a test manager what does it tell you because the first two test cases have been run and passed and these are linked back to the first two test conditions which are actually mitigating the risk one that you have identified in your software your risk one has been mitigated now let's look at the third test case what happened third test case has been run but it has been failed if you trace it back to which test condition this test condition 4 is linked to that and the test condition has been designed to mitigate the risk 2 so if you look at it risk 2 partially has been mitigated but because test case 3 has failed risk 2 is still outstanding now let us look at the test case 4 in our status so it has not yet been run so what does it mean because it is linked back to two test conditions that are linked to risk 3 risk 3 is not yet completed so risk 3 is outstanding that is how we use our framework and relate the test progress back to its test basis here in this case we have linked the test cases back to test conditions and them to risks similarly if you are using a requirement based test strategy or specification based test strategy then you will link requirements to test conditions to test cases and their status today so that is how we use this framework so in variety of ways we measure defects so defects are recorded in our test management tools and they will be properly classified and each defect is recorded as well and variety of diagrams variety of numbers analysis can be done there are Pareto charts to understand defect distribution by subsystem then scatter diagrams control charts flow charts cause and effect diagrams histograms and general defect status based on past failed outstanding variety of metrics can be established similarly for measuring confidence we told they cannot have direct measures but we can use surveys and uh, checklists to measure confidence so we may gather subjective feedback about test team's confidence on software quality by administrating well designed surveys you can talk to end users you can talk to the system testers and other stakeholders based on their understanding how is functionality how do they rate usability how do they rate the characteristic performance characteristic how they rate security characteristic how they rate you can create a, a confidence measure using surveys so both are used in our frameworks so based on this let us do a knowledge check i have a question there in a given company testing is expected to follow a risk based testing strategy assume the project is currently in test execution for the following tests there is a table there the values given represent the test identifier the test case identifier the risk level associated with the test identifier and identifier for the requirement that is covered by that particular test and the current status of the test respectively so below i have five statements which two of the following statements are true so there are two statements are which are true and rest of the statements are false so you have to identify them after carefully examining the table there where we have test id the risk level requirement id and the status of the test so let us read the first statement the test team might not be following the test strategy since the test o2.010 higher risk than o2.019 so if you look at the table yes that is true actually 2.0.10 that is actually higher risk than the first one so the test team may not be fully following the test strategy so that is a right statement you are right the second point is the test sequence is certainly incorrect since test 02.0100 is higher risk than 02.019 
Do you agree or not? The statement is telling the test sequence is certainly incorrect because the risks are not matching. So this may not be a right statement because we can't say it is certainly incorrect because there may be something in the test strategy telling that every uh, risk level must have one test each and we have to run. So if that is the test strategy is guiding us then certainly it is incorrect is not a right statement. Then the third statement is if the test plan calls for running at least one test for each requirement as early as possible the test sequencing might be correct. Yes, we told the point 2 is incorrect because of the reason 3. So that is a true statement. You are right. Then the fourth statement is the test manager should stop test execution while evaluating all problems that exist with test sequencing. So test manager should stop. Do you agree with that? No, there is nothing fundamentally wrong here. They may not be following test strategy, but uh, still because uh, the sequencing is not certainly incorrect. So that is why this is a wrong statement. Then the fifth statement tells that running test 02.019 was a waste of time because it did not find any defects. So that is also an incorrect statement. If a test doesn't reveal defect means it is not a good test that is not correct. So you are right it is a false statement. So hope you have enjoyed this. So typically these are the kind of questions you will encounter in your advanced test manager certification exam. So get prepared for these kind of questions. So hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Learn and have fun.